There's a recent study that came out regarding the decline of bee populations across the world. There have been numerous studies on this emerging problem, and they've discovered associations with other pollutants as well, like insecticides, uh, specifically neonicotinoids, which are expected to be banned in the EU in the near future, uh, solely because of how damaging they are to these honeybee populations. Now, the recent study that I want to talk about looked at more than 280 sites across the U.S., and they examined local variables like pollutants, elevation, latitude, habitat type, uh, human interference, and a whole bunch of other variables. They really got a comprehensive analysis of each one of these sites. With respect to the bees, uh, they examined the populations of four different species, and they observed the bees' health, uh, their lifestyles, the vitality of their nests, and their causes of death. By using machine learning techniques to analyze and organize all of this data, the researchers found strong associations with the presence of fungicides and the frequency of an infection called a nosema infection in the bees. Nosema infections are caused by a hardy, drought-resistant microsporidian called Nosema apis. It's actually now considered a, a fungi, or part of a sister group to the fungi. Somehow, exposure to the fungicide seems to be impairing the bee's immune system, and it makes them more vulnerable to Nosema infections. This infection has its strongest effect on the female workers of the hive, where it causes symptoms like dysentery. The bees will excrete lines of yellow waste from bloated, inflamed abdomens. Unfortunately, the disease is spread through their feces, through the waste, so these bees with dysentery are endangering all of their kin. But they're sick, you know, and they're really uncomfortable, and their bodies are distorted, so what else can they do? They can't really fly away because this infection seems to impair their wings and it forces them to crawl around. They experience the formation of lesions and cellular tumors within their digestive tract, and uh, this impairs their ability to digest food, uh, like pollen and nectar, and as a result, they become malnourished. If these female workers don't starve to death quickly, then overall they tend to live much shorter lives. Now if the queen gets infected, in addition to all of these other symptoms, her capacity to produce eggs pretty much collapses, as her egg-producing cells, called the oocytes, just atrophy and wither away. The end result is that the colony experiences a huge drop in its population, as workers begin to die off in large numbers after having spent the last few weeks of their life in a dysentery-induced haze, unable to do work. The whole colony, the whole hive, suffers. Because there's being less food brought into the hive, less work is being done, even though the surviving bees have to work harder to make up for the loss. This is hugely stressful for the beehives, and it's a major factor in the widespread bee decline. So it's no good at all when fungicides like chlorothalonil, which is the most widely used fungicide in the U.S., you know, used for targeting molds and mildews, it's not good when that's now apparently a huge factor in increasing the rate of this nosema infection in bee colonies. Whatever it does to bees, uh, this fungicide exposure apparently makes the nosema parasite able to survive the fungicide, and maybe be even encouraged by it. Researchers largely point to failures in the regulatory agencies that are supposed to detect things like this. For example, Professor David Goulson of the University of Sussex in the United Kingdom says, and I quote, This research suggests the regulatory system for pesticides may have let us down once again. Perhaps because regulatory tests don't expose bees to the pesticide and a disease at the same time. Unquote. There's an argument that was made by the UK's chief scientific advisor that laboratory conditions don't seem to be able to accurately simulate real world, landscape scale ecological conditions, and so their predictive power may be vastly overestimated. It's then reasonable to hope that our regulatory agencies will look into this objectively and see if there really is a need to reform how we test these chemicals, maybe include some stricter regulations, some tougher punishments for the safety and the integrity of the ecosystems around us.